Uh, well, thanks, everyone. I, I have only one slide, and this is it. Um, as you've already heard, uh, we did go GA with AppMesh uh, earlier this week. Really excited to do that. Really excited to be part of the Envoy community. Um, I also had a, a good success this morning in figuring out how to get my name tag off of the backing and attached to my shirt. If you are struggling with that, I can help you with that after my talk. Um, so I just want to say a few words about how AWS is thinking about service meshes and about app mesh. Uh, the name app mesh is deliberate. Uh, we think about application level networking as the next generation of networking. So historically, when you wanted to do things with containers or VMs in a cloud, the first thing that you had to do was set up a bunch of networking infrastructure. Like in AWS, you set up a VPC, virtual private cloud, you set up subnets and security groups and route tables and all this stuff that really has nothing to do with your application. And if you're focused on microservice architecture and iterating quickly and building applications, that's what you want to focus on is your applications and how they talk to each other, how those services talk to each other, how do you control traffic between those services, how do you observe that traffic, how do you secure it, and you don't want to spend a bunch of time thinking about networking stuff. And so that's how we're thinking about app mesh and about service meshes. And that that mesh should work across compute services. So it shouldn't be tied in with a particular container orchestrator or even tied in with containers. It should work on VMs. It should work, should work on Kubernetes. It should work on Fargate and ECS. Uh, in the future, it should work with serverless functions like Lambda. So that's kind of just big picture how we're thinking about service mesh and app mesh. So I actually want to um, go from big picture to, to very hands-on. I'm going to show you an actual service mesh running live here. I'm going to talk through a whole bunch of stuff related to this picture. Let me just, uh, since my Windows screen changed here in resolution, let's just zoom in a little bit. So this is an actual um, running uh, mesh. And uh, let me just uh, hit the plus button there a few times. This is an actual running mesh uh, with app mesh. This is actually an AWS X-ray screen. I'm just going to describe what we're seeing on the, on the screen here. So there's these four green uh, boxes, and then there's a little thing called clients over on the left. Um, so there's actually two services running in app mesh here. There's a service that we're calling the gateway, and please don't get confused by that word. It's not like an official AWS gateway service. This is just a service that happens to be called gateway. Um, and then there's a color teller red service. So this application is really, really simple. It tells you the color. I actually have a little running web app here. You click the button, and it tells you the color, and it's always red. Pretty exciting. Uh, <laughs> And so this x-ray view is really cool because it actually shows you kind of the logical structure of the mesh with the proxies in showing up in the mesh. So let's actually trace like a request, what happens. So a request comes in from the client, and it goes into the gateway service. Again, it's not like an API gateway. It's just a service that happens to be called gateway. And the first thing it hits is actually the envoy sitting in front of the actual container. And that's this circle here. You can see it says AWS app mesh proxy there. And then that Envoy forwards it into the actual container that's running the gateway service. The actual container has no idea that that happened. And the developers of that container have no idea that that happened. They just know they're getting a request. And then the way that that gateway container works, it's a little node application. It just turns around and forwards that request to the actual color teller service. But what it's making the request to is a virtual service. That's a construct in AppMesh that's called colorteller.local. There is no actual service called colorteller.local. So the gateway makes a request to a service that doesn't exist. It's a virtual service. And I think we heard that concept mentioned earlier today. And then when that request goes into the Envoy, the Envoy looks at it and says, OK, color tell it out local. I have some configuration. I'm actually going to interpret that and say, I know where that's supposed to go. It's actually supposed to go to the red service. And it forwards the request. 
goes into the red Envoy and then into the red container. Actually, it's not a container in this case. It's just running on EC2. Um, so this, this is a very simple example, but it illustrates the power of the mesh, the fact that the gateway service, the developers of that, can use this virtual thing that doesn't actually exist, and then the proxy, through the configuration that it has, actually routes that request to the right place. And not only that, but I can go in as the operator of the mesh, and I can go change those rules on the fly. And that gateway service and the developers of that gateway service don't have to know that that's happening. So the color teller team might come along and say, hey, I know we were running on red and we were on EC2. We've migrated to Kubernetes and it's now green. Can we start rolling that out? Yeah, let's go do that. We're going to try it out. We're going to go 50-50 on our canary. We're going to live on the edge. And uh, let's see what happens. So oh, hey, now we start getting some green mixed in there. Now the, the gateway service this is the key point I want to just keep hammering home. The developers of that service have no idea that this happened. They just keep using that color teller local service. And then I can go, and hopefully we'll see the, the traces here. Uh, show up on this service map. Yes, so we see the green that starts showing up. Um, and so this actually illustrates the fact not only did the color teller local service, virtual service, just automatically start applying those rules on the fly, uh, but I'm able to do this across compute platforms. So I actually migrated from EC2 running on an instance to uh, EKS, Kubernetes pods. And the developers have no idea that that's happening. It just, just magically works. Now, what you don't see on uh, this X-ray display is the control plane. Um, so that's actually what AppMesh is, is a managed control plane. So we have a set of APIs and a console, which I've been using the console. That's what I, how I edited those uh, routes. Um, and that control plane is a highly available service, available worldwide in many different AWS regions. And so when you, when you start up an Envoy, what happens is you configure that Envoy to actually connect to the control plane. And we've upstreamed some changes to Envoy that allow it to authenticate to the control plane so that you can't just have any random Envoy connect and get your mesh configuration. It has to be has to be running on an instance that has the right IAM role so that it authenticates to the control plane and you get the, the correct configuration. But that all happens automatically. All you have to do is start up an Envoy and inject the name of what's called the virtual node. <coughs> um, so that's beautiful. Uh, it works really, really well. And uh, our philosophy with Envoy is there isn't some special AWS-only Envoy. It's, it's just plain old Envoy that you can run. Now, we do have some changes that we've upstreamed that aren't um, in the official release yet. I think they will be in, uh, they will be in an upcoming release at some point. Uh, and, with, and at that point, you'll be able to literally just use the, the Envoy that's released, and it will work uh, with AppMesh. Now, that Envoy does run in your account, so the data plane is in the customer's account. Um, and that means that depending on what compute service you're using, it is your responsibility to get that Envoy image and run it and configure it. Um, and there's no guarantee on our side. We don't know on the control plane like what actual version of Envoy you're running. All we know is you ran an Envoy and it authenticated to the control plane. So you have the freedom to run your own Envoy. You can add stuff to it. You can make it, you can configure it differently if you want. In a simple example like this, there's only a handful of Envoys running. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you imagine scaling this up to hundreds or thousands of services running in different compute platforms, uh, then you start to have to wonder, well, how do I know that I'm running the right Envoy everywhere? How do I ensure that I'm actually running a consistent Envoy, that I don't have some team out there doing something dumb and running some untested version with extra stuff in it that's not supposed to be in there? 
Um, and that's where the next part of the presentation comes in uh, that Taiki is going to tell you about. Um, how do you actually use their Get Envoy service to ensure that you are actually running the same Envoy and that it's the Envoy that you trust uh, running everywhere. Um, so with that, I'll actually uh, hand it over to Taiki. Um, happy to talk one-on-one -on -one, uh, with folks if they have questions about uh, AppMesh uh, after. Uh, and I just wanted to say thanks to the Envoy project. This whole uh, launch would have obviously been impossible without, uh, without the incredible features that Envoy brings. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to, to Taiki and bring up his slides here. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, in my previous company, um, we are running all of service in AWS. Uh, it's on EC2 and ECS. And so I have to build our control plan <coughs> at that time, but I'm glad to hear that AWS offers this management control plan service. So yes, it's con congratulations. And <coughs> I'm Taiki uh, from Chetrate. I recently joined Chetrate. It's much, wa much worse. And a lot of things happened, and so I am here. Uh, so let me show uh, Get Envoy and its AWS integration. At first, uh, Get Envoy is basically uh, Get Envoy offers latest and reliable pre-built Envoy binaries for multi-platform support. It means uh, we can run that pre-built Envoy binary in multiple OS and multiple CPU architecture. And it's, it will be updated every day. And it offers a uh, tool set to <coughs> it, which allows us to easy to install and manage and upgrade uh, all of Envoy instance. The first one is Get Envoy CLI2. It's for local and development environment. And for production environment, we are planning to offer configuration management support or something to yeah, manage lots of Envoy interns. And <coughs> the third one is we are addressing configuration uh, user experience of Envoy. Uh, Envoy has lots of I its huge feature set. So when we adapt Envoy, at first it's difficult to configure Envoy properly at first. So yeah, we, <coughs> we are planning to solve this problem. And it's it's most important things that uh, it allows uh, keep consistency of overall running Envoy instances, even on much public clouds and hybrid environment. It's really important because uh, the main reason uh, why we are using service mesh is uh, to keep uh, uh, to keep uh, to keep uh, consistent uh, network communication component. So it's really important to us. And <coughs> we offer uh, support over Slack with Envoy M maintainer. They will be Lizan and D. So yeah, it's uh, what Get Envoy is. And this is a demo on local machine. This is on MacBook. And we can download M Get Envoy CLI and use the CLI tool to fetch latest Envoy binary. It's for Mac OS. And we can run that Envoy very easily.
Yes, and this is how Get Envoy works with App Mesh. Basically, uh, App Mesh offers a, XDS, a standard XDS endpoint via internet. So all we have to do is set up proper certificate. Uh, so uh, the communication will be happen over TRS. And <coughs> And we need uh, AWS IAM ex extension on Envoy. So right now, we have to uh, patch the Envoy and build our own Envoy, but it will be merged into upstream. And <coughs> we need to pass IAM credentials to the Envoy instance. It can be uh, if we run uh, EC2 instance, it, it can be passed via uh, inst uh, instance role or something. And outside of AWS, we can pass these credentials via environment variables. And AppMesh doesn't offer service discoveries right now, so we have to <coughs> uh, set up DNS uh, service discovery uh, with DNS or future uh, crowd, uh, we can use crowd map for register, uh, service registration. And the last one is uh, we have to set up network address translation. So capture the all uh, incoming and outgoing traffic uh, from up to uh, and re redirect uh, this traffic to running Envoy instance. And with, with these steps, we can uh, use uh, Envoy uh, in EC2 or outside of AWS, like on-premise VM environment. So yeah, this is how it works. And we have to simplify this, but yes, this is a mechanism. <coughs> so, <coughs> let me see. Uh, so, get envoys uh, encouraged to set up uh, the funda uh, fundamental structure of service mesh. It's a network proxy envoy. So, yes, please visit getenvoy.io and, yes, read these uh, all of the things. Thank you. That's all from me.